thank you for joining our uh, previous weekly academic sessions which were organized by UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. Uh, today's topic of discussion is total anomalous pulmonary venous return which will be presented by Dr. Hemang Gandhi so who is professor in Department of Cardiac Anesthesia at UNMICRC. Uh, he has 17 years of teaching experience. Good morning everyone. I am going to talk on today TAPVC, the types and perioperative management, especially for the clean, uh, critical care perspective and the NSHA perspective. So by the definition, uh, TAPVC is the cardiac malformation in which there is a no direct connection between any pulmonary vein and left atrium, but all the pulmonary vein connects to the right atrium or one of its draining tributaries. So in TAPVC, a PFO or a ASD with right to left shunt is always present, essentially all the patient who survive after the birth. So if going to the history, uh, TAPVC was first described in 1798 by the Wilson as a description of very unusual formation of the heart, which is uh, later known as a TAPVC. And after 150 years uh, approximately, the Muller has performed the first successful repair of TAPVC. So in embryology, uh, how the TAPVC are normally in early intrauterine life, lung buds drain into the common cardinal and umbilico vitelline venous system through splachnic flexors. So this primitive left atrium forms the common pulmonary vein which joins to the pulmonary portion of the splachnic flexors. So this primitive pulmonary vein separates from cardinal and umbilico vitelline veins. And then this common pulmonary vein uh, becomes to right and to left pulmonary vein and which enters into the left atrium. This is in the normal condition. But in case of TAPVC, there is failure of left atrium to link to the pulmonary venous flexor. So they retain connection to the uh, original cardinal vein or the umbilico vitelline vein and type depends upon which connection is retained after the birth. So according to this, there are four types of TAPVC which was described in 1957 by the Darlings. Uh, type 1 is the supracardiac TAPVC which accounts for 45% of the total TAPVC. So it is a main, commonly is the supracardiac TAPVC. Type 2 is the cardiac TAPVC which accounts for 25%. Type 3 is the infracardiac TAPVC which is 21% and 4 is a mixed TAPVC where there is a less than 10%. Uh, he, you can see here the supracardiac type of TAPVC where the pulmonary vein drains into the right side either in the innominate vein or uh, into the SVC and uh, form the supracardiac type of TAPVC. In infracardiac TAPVC, the pulmonary vein drains into either IVC or hepatic veins or into the portal venous system. And in coronary side TAPVC, the pulmonary vein drains into the coronary sinus in, through into the RA. So, what is the obstruction in this TAPVC? When there is the presence of an obstructive lesion in the anomalous pulmonary venous channel, profoundly influence the hemodynamic state and clinical feature of the patient. So, obstruction where that can occur obstruction? Obstruction usually occur at the interatrial septum where there is a small PA4, very small ASD. The second is the intrinsic narrowing in the wall of the anomalous vessels or there may be extrinsic pressure resulting in narrowing of the venous structure. Also in portal vein, if draining into portal vein by the hepatic sinusoid, it provides the uh, obstruction to the drainage and at the level of diaphragm and also the length of the vertical. So last three points uh, are in the infracardiac TAPVC. So usually all infracardiac TAPVC are at the obstruction. Natural history of this TAPVC, the incidence is 1.5 to 3 percent of co uh, total congenital heart disease and so it is relatively uncommon anomaly and survival uh, is 50 percent in 3 months and 20 percent survival in the 1 year. So those who survive in the first year of life usually have the large ASD and no pulmonary venous obstruction. They only survive after the 1, one, one year. The, this TAPVC can be associated with other cardiac anomalies like VSD, PDA, tetralogy of fallot, ABCD, TGA, single ventricle, coarctation of aorta or it may also associated with the asplenia or polysplenia and visceral heterotaxy. The pathophysiology of uh, TAPVC, it, the unobstructed TAPVC has ad, usually admixture of pulmonary and systemic venous uh, flow. 
so they commonly both drain into the right side of the heart so the right side of the heart is usually dilated with the volume overload and the rv pressures overload if the asd is restricted and this uh, condition pulmonary blood flow increases and pulmonary artery hypertension develops and la LV, uh, and lv remains underfilled and most patient have the pfo or asd uh, in obstructive TAPVC, uh, post capillary pulmonary venous congestion uh, occurs and increased pulmonary lymphatic flow that is reflex pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction and in this condition increase in the PVR but there is a decrease in the pulmonary blood flow as compared to the unobstructed TAPVC. A low volume of uh, saturated blood flows in, the ven uh, flows in the venous mixture so worse systemic oxygen saturation and all with this lead to the decrease in the cardiac output. So the clinical features of uh, TAPVC, how it they presents, uh, the, without obstruction the patient uh, remain asymptomatic at the birth, tachypnea and feeding difficulties within the first few weeks of the life, they may develop later on recurrent respiratory tract infection and failure to thrive, they may have a mild cyanosis and gradually they develop right heart failure and pulmonary arterial hypertension. But when the TAPVC with the obstruction, they uh, they develop tachycardia, tachypnea and cyanosis within the few hours of the birth. Uh, one, system, uh, uh, one symptoms begins rapid progression to the dyspnea, feeding difficulties and cardiorespiratory failure. If this, unobstructed, this obstructed TAPVC uh, remain untreated, death may occur due to the pulmonary edema and RV failure within few days or weeks of the life. Infracardiac TAPVC has cyanosis and dyspnea will may be accentuated by straining and swallowing due to the compression of common pulmonary vein by increased intra-abdominal pressure or by the esophagus. So for the diagnosis uh, we can go with the commonest thing is uh, echocardiography and also you can uh, see some changes in the ECG and X-ray. So in ECG you have a tall peaked P wave in lead 2 or in the right precordial leads may have a right axis deviation and uh, they have a right ventricular hypertrophy uh, or some occasionally incomplete RBBB. So in radiological feature, uh, TAPVC without obstruction you will, you will get the RA and RV enlarged, prominent pulmonary artery segments and the left sided chambers are not enlarged. So this will give the figure of 8 or snowman appearance of the cardiac shadow in, uh, seen in patient with the TAPVC2 draining to the left innominate vein. So here is the classical uh, x-ray of figure of 8 or snowman appearance. TAPVC with the pulmonary venous obstruction you may get the ground glass appearance uh, of the heart and cardiac size is usually normal uh, with the obstructed TAPVC. The echocardiography features, common features for the all TAPVC are the right sided heart volume overload. So RA is enlarged, IAS is both towards the left, RV is also enlarged and compressing the LV, IVS deviated to the leftward, IVS may not may move the paradoxically small size LA and LV cavity and pulmonary arteries are dilated. So here you can see that uh, small LA and LV and behind the LA there is a presence of some echogenic space which is a common chamber. So when you are doing the echocardiography and you are finding the right sided heart volume overload, the first echocardiographic suspicious that supports the diagnosis of TAPVC is inability to image the pulmonary vein entering into the left atrium and left atrium is small. Then you find out the eco free space behind the left atrium which is a pulmonary venous confluence and trace the from there you can trace the vertical vein drainage and uh, from that you can get the which type of TAPVC. The, uh, and coronary size uh, sinus type TAPVC, the sinus is dilated and bulges enter superiorly into the LA which differentiate from the you have to differentiate this dilated coronary sinus from the LSVC draining into coronary sinus. Supracardiac type TAPVC, you have a vertical vein which flows into the innominate vein or into the SVC or intracardiac type TAPVC descending anomalous vein flows away from the heart towards the abdomen which may drain into the uh, IVC or uh, hepatic vein. Obstructed TAPVC, the pulmon, how we can diagnose the obstructed TAPVC on the echocardiography? The pulmonary venous flow, increased flow velocity, turbulence flow pattern and loss of phasic variation in the obstructed TAPVC. Normal pulmonary venous flow is low velocity, 
phasic laminar pattern with uh, flow reversal during the atrial systole which you will not get in case of obstructed TAPVC. So, here you can see that supra cardiac TAPVC, supra sternal long axis view showing the vert, uh, vertical vein, left innominate vein and right SVC. And in uh, the same uh, supra cardiac TAPVC, you can see the phasic pulmonary venous flow in vertical vein and innominate vein that suggests the absence of pulmonary venous obstruction. In cardiac type TAPVC, you can see in parasternal long axis view with the dilated coronary sinus uh, bulging into the left atrium. And in modified apical four chamber view, you can see the pulmonary venous confluence draining into the coronary sinus. In infracardiac TAPVC, you can see the sub you can see easily in subcostal view showing the pulmonary venous confluence traced to the descending vein that drains into the portal vein. And uh, here you can see the continuous uh, turbulent and non phasic pulmonary venous flow that indicates the pulmonary venous obstruction when you do the Doppler study in the uh, this uh, 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 descending vein. So, other investigation also you can do for confirmation of echocardiographic finding. We mostly commonly use the uh, CT pulmonary angiography for that. So, after diagnosis, when you decide, uh, when we have the patient of TAPC, they are having some problems like congestive cardiac failure, growth and developmental delay, frequent respiratory infections, pulmonary vascular disease and pulmonary edema in obstructive type of TAPVC. So, we have to encounter this problem routinely with the patient of TAPVC. So, management of this TAPVC patient is usually corrective surgery is for uh, is the definitive treatment for the TAPVC management. non obstructive TAPVC patients are relatively stable and can be taken for elective corrective surgery within the few days of diagnosis irrespective of patient's age and weight. But when the obstructive TAPVC presents, uh, so it is a surgical emergency, neonates sometimes require the intensive resuscitation before going for the definitive surgery. So, when uh, this obstructive TAPVC present uh, to the hospital, it requires the em emergency medical management in form of oxygenation with the nasal prong or hood, endotracheal intubation and hyperventilation sometime with 100 percent oxygen if it is not maintaining with the nasal prong or hood, induced respiratory alkalosis with the PCO2 of less than 30 millimeter of mercury which decrease the PVR and improves the oxygenation of patient. A metabolic acidosis treated with the bicarb and correction of the pulmonary uh, correction of the pH to the normal or bit, little bit alkalo, alkalosis side. Heart failure uh, if present it should be treated with ionotrop and diuretics. Uh, prostaglandin even infusion to maintain the patency of ductus venosus to the uh, decompress the pulmonary veins in obstructed TAPVC. Uh, keep the patient warm with the warmer. Very rarely the, there may be a balloon or a blade of atrial sept, uh, uh, septostomy used to palliative procedure. When, when this patient posted for surgery, the anesthesia management is very important in uh, intraoperative and postoperative period. So, how we, uh, we have to induce this patient? If obstructed TAPVC is there, inhalation induction will not well tolerated in such a ill patient. So, always go for a uh, IV induction with the use of small dose of ketamine, fentanyl and vacurin. If there is no IV line, you can sedate the patient with the intramuscular ketamine. non obstructed TAPVC, uh, we usually use the routine pediatric induction. Mo the all monitoring should be used in this uh, uh, TAPVC patients are the 6 lead ECG monitoring, pulse oximetry monitoring, invasive blood pressure monitoring, CVP monitoring, temperature monitoring. If uh, planning for the total uh, circulatory arrays also go for the two temperature monitoring in form of uh, nasopharyngeal and rectal. Uh, measure the left atrial all pulmonary artery pressure uh, intraoperatively which is usually placed by the surgeon which very helpful in the post operative period to monitor the LA or PA pressures and uh, NIRS which is usually optional if you have the facility you can use this uh, uh, NIRS. But 
the pre cpb management of this patient is very important uh, till the patient go on the cardiopulmonary bypass if obstructed tpvc is there you have to ma keep maximize the po2 correct the metabolic alkalosis if any uh, present in the uh, abg or maintain the hemodynamic stability with the use of inotropes as necessary commonly we use the uh, melrinon to control the pulmonary artery pressures Uh, transesophageal echocardiograph is relatively contraindicated due to the risk of further compression and obstruction to the pulmonary vein even in the presence of non obstructed tpv so we usually avoid the uh, transesophageal echocardiography in uh, pre cpv period Uh, it, uh the cpp management if tfpvc repair in older children usually uh, cardiopulmonary bypass alone is uh, good enough but in neonates sometime the there is use, uh, we have to use the uh, uh, total circulatory arrest as a part of cpp strategy the reason for this total circulatory arrest is venous cannula limits the heart movement and exposure of venous confluent thus needs to be removed venous cannula and achieve maximum exposure to ensure the perfect anastomosis and second point is the amount of venous return that enters into the field from the bronchial circulation is excessive and that interfere with the visualization of reconstruction of, uh, of the uh, common chamber with the left atrium so after surgery the weaning from the cpb is challenging specifically with the obstructed tpvc there are very high chances of pulmonary arterial hypertension development so at the time of weaning the strategy is hyperventilation with 100% oxygen endotracheal suctioning properly uh, done before uh, starting the uh, weaning from the cpb acute sedation and paralysis should be given anodilators like melrinon we have to add and pulmonary dilators if required with the in inhaled nitric oxide or phenoxybenzamine some people using the prostaglandin or sildenafil also to control the pulmonary artery hypertension so winning from uh, cpb for is uh, really challenging for even in the in case of obstructed tapvc sometime also it is difficult for the non obstructed tapvc following repair left atrial pressure uh, filling pressures may be elevated due to the small size and non compliant left atrium and left ventricle so we have to accept the low blood pressure while winning from the cpv that will help to avoid the over distension of the left side of the heart careful fluid management along with the optimization of the heart rate and rhythm and anotropic support with the melrinon and adrenaline which improves the cardiac output and perioperative dysrhythmia are specifically supraventricular tachycardia are may occur in 20% of patients so we that we have to correct the electrolyte balance and very rarely will require for the uh, antiarrhythmic drugs perioperative pulmonary hypertension occurs in as many as 50% of patient and is a major risk factor for early mortality in tapvc after tapvc repair so inhaled nitric oxide should be readily available for the in immediate use in the obstructed tapvc paradoxical pulmonary hypertension and systemic hyper hypotension has been reported with the use of inhaled nitric oxide specifically two types of patient who have the preoperative atrial obstruction or poorly compliant left ventricle with the ventricular dysfunction they have a chances of paradoxical pulmonary hypertension and systemic hypotension the ventilation part is very important in the uh, following the tapvc repair because the pulmonary functions are compromised after the bypass as a result of two pulmonary insult this patient have pre operative pulmonary edema secondary to pulmonary venous obstruction and uh, in on cpb they have developed the inflammatory response so these two factors affects the pulmonary function so pulmonary compliance is decreased with this uh, factors and the large uh, atrio atrial to alveolar gradient develops and so the, this affects the pulmonary gas exchange and which optimized with the use of pressure control ventilation and the peep to improve the lung compliance post operative management in the icu is very important many patient with have a significant residual biventricular dysfunction and pulmonary hypertension is the immediate post operative pr depending on their pre operative conditions optimize the biventricular function and prevent the pulmonary hypertension are the cornerstone of the post operative management in the icu so you use the epinephrine and melrinon infusion in the icu to counteract the biventricular dysfunction and pulmonary hypertension respectively monitor the right atrial pressure pulmonary artery or the uh, left atrial pressure is useful in post operative period 
usually ventilate this patient for 24 to 48 hour with the use of sedation and analgesia and maintain the normothermia, uh, normothermia uh, in this patient. Acidosis if any present during this should be corrected, avoid frequent suctioning and positioning and if it required should be done under the full sedation. Pulmonary artery pressure if high we have to use the inhaled nitric oxide or IV sildenafil or phenoxybenzamine in the post operative period in the ICU. So in ICU we have uh, some early complication or patient have may develop the, some late complication after the TAPVC repairs. The early complications uh, are the pulmonary edema, pulmonary hypertensive crisis, phrenic nerve damage or rhythm, rhythm disorders. Lately patient may present with the pulmonary venous obstruction again anastomotic stricture or pulmonary venous stenosis. So we have to go, we look for the specifically the early complication in the ICU uh, during that course after the repair. Um, the commonest uh, problem in the ICU is the pulmonary artery hyper, uh, pulmonary hypertensive crisis as, uh, as high as 40% in post operative uh, period which is the major cause of uh, mortality also. How will you define the pulmonary hypertensive crisis? It is when the pulmonary artery pressure is more than or equal to systemic arterial pressure along with the significant deterioration in the hemodynamic. Then it uh, requires the special attention and the treatment with the same what we have uh, learned hyperventilation with the 100% oxygen, inhaled nitric oxide is the treatment of choice, infusion of melrinone or phenoxybenzamine or prostacycline or if required you can add the sildenafil also. Pulmonary edema if present, should, uh, they, it is usually non-compliant left heart which in, uh, and increased left atrial pressure which leads to the pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction and pulmonary edema. Diuretics are very useful in this cases. Patient may develop rhythm disorder, uh, in, usually this is common in cardiac type TAPVC which are the junk, uh, commonly is the junctional rhythm or various types of the heart block after the repair. So surgical outcomes previously the mortality was 50% in early time uh, 1960 when it is started but now it is come down to the 5% less than 5% recently. The risk factor for the mortality are the young patient at the age of operation, pulmonary venous obstruction, infracardiac TAPVC, emergency operation, refractory pulmonary hypertension and cardiac failure. So I am concluding my talk with that TAPVC is a rare congenital heart anomaly but when present as obstructed TAPVC it is a surgical emergency. Echocardiography is the diagnostic modality of our choice for the TAPVC. Surgical correction is the definitive treatment and improved surgical techniques and perioperative care leads to the significant better outcome of TAPVC repair. Thank you.